All right, hello and welcome everyone to the return of the show. This is a special episode in A, the fact that this is a video podcast, so uh, you can it, consume it via video, and B, um, Alex is not here, so today we have subbing in Jose. Hello. Yes, it is, and for anyone that is unfamiliar, Jose has been doing our current coverage of Vox Machina, as well as last year's coverage of Vox Machina, and um, I think my hero when we what do you think it was, the, it, was that, us. <laughs> it was us yeah i'm like do we don't talk about the coverage of my hero because we decided to cover it during the season nothing was happening yeah don't worry alex will come back next week oh yeah it's uh I mean, we're not here to talk about my hero but man could i talk about my hero today we are here to talk about the last of us in particular um the most recent episode episode five endure and survive aka i, a, I spent the morning um in my feels and perhaps crying a little bit. How about you, Jose? Uh, feels I did hell them. A lot of times I was like gripping my uh, like myself, just like watching everything. I was like, I was, damn. Uh, the the second the second that they were under the car and the clickers were getting at him, I was like, this is that's it. <laughs> Someone's been bitten, and it was exactly who I was worried about. And uh, we're we're all sad. Twitter made it very known that this episode was going to be sad. Everyone was really worried about it. There was a whole thing that I was seeing on uh, like on the like the comparison between the like screenshots from the game compared to the show. Yeah. So uh, I was just like looking at the comments of it and people were just being like, as soon as I as soon as we heard this or like these lines were said, they knew what was coming. Oh, no. Which lines was it? It was uh, the oh, what's it called? Are you still human inside? Oh, Oh, <laughs> no, I don't like See, that. There's a benefit for playing the game or like knowing of it. And then there's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know of the main plot points, um, it, which does like make for like an analyzing the story. It may, it makes for it to be a lot easier to kind of know where Joel and Ellie are headed. Um, it, I knew very little about these two characters. I just knew that it was going to be sad yep. because Twitter was like, oh, no, they made episode three like that. So what's going to happen when we get to Joel, excuse me, Henry and Sam? And then we met Henry and Sam and I'm like, well, they're they're dead. I think just odd numbers are just always meant to be big feels hitters. I, I think what they are doing very cleverly <laughs> is they're making sure that we have time to breathe Fair enough. After every episode. Like, episode one, really, really sad. Episode two, pretty sad, although it was mostly scary. That episode, uh, like, I was watching it with my partner, and it, she was like, oh, the first episode wasn't that bad. I think I could do this. And episode two <laughs> happens, and it's like, I'm good. I'm going to step out. <laughs> She stepped three. back in for episode oh three. God. She cried, and then she hasn't been watching the rest with me. Dude, she's great. Hello. <laughs> you, you have, um, you know who you are. I'm not going to say your name on camera, but you, know, yeah, you, you are appreciated here. And watching you um, get squeamish at the zombies is fantastic. Um, yeah, now I want to watch it with y'all. <laughs> it's, it's a time. I mean, like that's the. Uh, this is just a good show, and like the way that each episode has rising viewership yeah. is absurd. Like it was the second largest viewership that HBO has had for a show, basically next to just Game of Thrones. Pretty much, yeah. And like it was by a wide margin, but the fact that it's growing like this every week, it kind of proves that like a lot of the people that were holding out, in my opinion, were the people that were like, "Oh, video game adaptation, not Yikes, for me," bro. <laughs> and then. The reviews keep coming out, and yeah. people go, "Oh, there might be something to this," and then they watch yeah. it. And, and there's also the people though that like to binge the whole thing. So oh my that's god, weird too. Yeah. But, oh my god, I can't imagine what they will be going. I. Through. What kind of emotional torture would <laughs> binging The Last of Us be? I masochist. Could, that's it. Oh, uh, I can't. A, a mental mas masochist. Yeah, I. I can't like put myself through that pain. Um, speaking of pain. We should talk about the uh, backstory of one Henry and the essentially how that's tied to the fall of Fedra. So it was really well established in this episode. Um, Fedra kind of sucks. We knew that already, right? Yeah. Um, it seems like this Fedra was worse than the previous Fedras. I would say yes. <laughs> like, I think the exact words were like raping and pillaging, which I'm like, ooh, I don't think we saw that at the... Uh, at the previous Boston Fedra, so really this going is for those, bad. Uh, you know, fuck, not the not the war. What? 
Lot. Those old uh, fireplaces? No, I'm I'm talking about just like compared to like American history, like oh. the vibes they're going for. Oh God, um, uh, it, you said Civil War, and I'm like, that's not right. But I think there's, I, 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 think I forgot the right. name, but yeah, you, you you know what I'm getting at. Yes. Okay. There's like there's a lot going on here. The way in which um like it opens up and we actually see the fall of Fedra is brutal, and it's kind of strange how like they tell us these things but we only see things from kathleen's rebellion Mm -hmm. and kathleen's rebellion is ugly the entire thing is like just string people up promising fair trials and then like gunning them down and we kind of get informed we kind of get filled in later that henry he was just another informant he's just the person that essentially took down the biggest member of the resistance and kathleen's brother which last episode we were talking like why is kathleen so focused on this person and it is strictly out of revenge which as much as i liked kathleen for how interesting she was it was such a weak spot in her character how much she needed to go after this man yeah it it, it, there's always that thing with the zombie or infected movies where it's just the one powerhouse and like just a tyrant just like go, go, goes completely ballistic with everything. So I, I mean, I'm not, I haven't watched all the Walking Dead, uh, but it's my understanding that Negan is kind of close to this. I would honestly say a little bit closer to go- the governor, but um, oh okay, because I, I, I can definitely I, see Negan's bias with that. But for as fresh as my memory can be with that, uh, I think the governor was like one of those like insane dudes. Yeah, I think I did get to I did get to the governor like way back in the day. The Walking Dead was one of those shows that like the second I realized I was just like, "Oh, there's no end game here. This is just going to keep going and these characters are going to keep having a bad time." I I was gone. Yeah, zombie shows are and it's it's, it's a tough thing, really. I, it's it's a hard genre when you're establishing people that are in a never-ending apocalypse, which is the reason why a the framing for this works really well is that we are focused on getting Ellie to a place to potentially cure this. Now, whether or not it's curable, the answer is they have very much lent into the idea that it's not, yeah. that it's going to be extremely difficult to uh, deal with. Yeah. Cause I, I don't know if you saw the, at the very end of the show, they actually did have a preview for the next episode. And I do know how the end of the game goes. So I'm, <laughs> I'm also a little aware of the end of the game. I'm also aware that in the next game, they're an Ellie is an adult, and Ellie is very gay, and I know other things that I'm not going to say on the spot on the podcast. I love I don't... how you compare the the <laughs> the next game. She's very gay, as in she's never been before. She's well, I th- I so I don't know if she comes like this is, uh, and I'm I'm actively spoiling this so that people that can be upset about it can be upset and leave. Um, but it's my understanding that her coming out doesn't happen until the second game because it's also my understanding that um the people that don't uh, homophobic people um threw a fucking fit when the second game there's came a out whole lot of, of stuff going on with this with the second game that wasn't even just from that but um i don't remember how the prequel small mini game not mini game but like small game left behind i think it is was but um I think there was a some bit of instance there, but I could be wrong. Yeah, Alex has hinted <clears throat> towards um, some. We might be getting some left behind stuff in this season, which uh, would be very, very sad. Apparently, and I'm like, I'm not ready for it. Yeah. That's an Ellie backstory at the time, and if we find out she's queer there, great. Um, but I don't want to be involved in the tragedy that definitely is a part of that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Last of Us. The, God, the entire thing with, like, these kids, though, and, like, growing up in the apocalypse is, like, Ellie kind of had it easy. Sam, not so much. Like, one of the things that they did, and it's my understanding that this is a change, is they made him deaf. And I'm not sure if the leukemia thing was originally part of the original game. It's my understanding that they've given these characters a lot of additional, um characterization in order to fill in some of the holes now that i don't remember but i know i was watching some of the scenes of when um joel henry sam and ellie were all together of it there was a good bit of differences and uh and but also similarity so like one was like the goal the the soccer goal thing yeah so on the in the show of course it's painted on the wall in the game it's an actual net but it's not like you know out in the open yeah it's like a small little in in uh 
indoor thing. Yes. The, oh my God. by the way, the wholesomeness of those like moments that we have with the kids gets me every time. <laughs> because like, this is a world where good things apparently don't happen. Yeah. Um, it, it, I feel like they have made that very apparent. And just like seeing kids being kids, like, first of all, it warms the soul a little bit. Second of all, it makes me really, really sad because I know that this is not a story that inherently has a happy ending. Yeah. Henry's reaction to seeing them in both the game and the show was also like very much on point. It was such a wholesome thing. <gasps> to see. I mean, like the whole moral grayness of this is like, you can celebrate these small moments, but at the same time, like the things that they have to do to get there. And um, like in the preview, they talk and they've already talked about this, but Joel's killed a lot of people. Yeah. Joel's essentially been a highway man. Um, I feel like that's pretty established at this point, but like at the same time, Henry has sold out a major person in order to get his little brother medicine. And like, at that time, Joel wasn't necessarily doing things for Ellie. He was doing things for survival and for Tess. But you can kind of see, like, how these characters are playing into each other. And also, like, some of the choices that I feel like Joel's going to have to make. Because yeah. I feel like Joel, at this point, is bonding with Ellie so much that he is going to start viewing her like family. Um, which I feel like is a pretty obvious thing, given... Given the, the dialogue. The, given the dialogue and the themes of the show. Also, Pedro Pascal has now been typecast as um, a, yeah. a, as found father. So, yeah. like... First Grogu, now Ellie. Yeah, it's... um One of my favorite things is he actually had to get permission from Disney to play this role. Really? Yeah, so it may have just been Kathleen Kennedy from Star Wars, but he had to get permission in order to play a character that was essentially really, really similar to uh, yeah. Din Djarin. That's insane. So, I mean, it makes sense, but it makes they sense, were but like, also was like, really? It's like, you don't have a say in what he does with that. That wasn't in the contract, but... Disney and Lucasfilms just freaking yeah, it's, whatever. They, I mean, I think we're all the better for it. Uh, the amount of thirst over this man on the internet is absurd right now. I did come across... Uh, I don't want to necessarily plug in. I'm not in a bad way, but like just because I did come across like this one of the YouTube shorts that was like Pedro Pascal saying daddy or something like that. <laughs> or like Pedro Pascal is daddy, something like that. And the thumbnail was uh, captioned daddy. Oh, with of a picture course. Of, of Pedro Pascal. Of so. course. I mean, the amount of uh, the amount yep. of thirst edits mm -hmm. that are that are being passed around. Like, I feel like everyone's rediscovering this man after because. Mm -hmm. um, the last time that I remember this much Pedro Pascal thirst was absolutely uh, when his character in Game of Thrones was like at his peak, um, which I'm man, what a way to go on that character. But boy, was that a memorable appearance for that actor. The uh, Oberyn, my <laughs> you'll let you'll forever be my inner beast. I love you so much. The amount of people from Game of Thrones that we're now see we're seeing again, just like up to date, They're, even Ellie. So yeah. yeah, I mean, like I think Game of Thrones was this cultural touchstone for a lot of people, and anyone that was in it like has a pretty good career. Just otherwise, yeah, and like even if their roles was not great. So like, um, for example, um. The person who played Sansa, I can't believe I forget her name, and her uh, playing as a Dark Phoenix, even though that movie was like when it I was went trash. Yeah. Yes, um, and then like everybody else, and like you're now seeing like um, freaking Jon Snow and like uh, and who he was in the Eternals, the Black Knight. Yeah, so, like yeah, Sophie Turner. I believe that's it. Yeah, yeah. I I forget if her last name has changed since she's gotten married, but um, uh, probably. But yeah, okay. but, yeah. So Sophie Turner, a uh, fantastic actress. Um, the yeah, it's it's funny. This is like such an HBO uh, legacy show, and mm -hmm. it's like legacy both within uh, both within Game of Thrones and, of course, The Last of Us games, because there's so many voice actors that are not reprising their roles necessarily, right. but are coming back to play other minor parts within the show, which is I think it's just a fantastic little touchstone for the original game. But yeah, also Ashley Johnson in the show. I'm gonna... <laughs> Ashley Johnson is listed in the cast. OK. Um, I'm not going to say who she is. Well, I don't even, it's not. Okay. Oh, it's a, spo it is such a spoiler. Then don't worry play. about it. <laughs> it. Do not look it up. If you do not want to find out, it is such a spoiler. Um, God, the, these poor, the, these poor people, I'm like, they're doing such a good job. They get their way out. And then of course, um, we get hit by an infected attack 
which oddly enough saves them from Kathleen because Kathleen, I feel like in this ep last episode was so much diving into her and we got a really good idea of what her stakes were. This episode, we really understand that she is absolutely a take no prisoners person. So yep. when she pulls up to them, it's just a like, well, we got that hint too. last one when she killed the doctor. Oh, that is true. The only difference is that she wanted to see if there was a use for a doctor before okay. she killed him. Fair enough. You're right. So yeah. there was like kind of this, um, Alex called it pragmatic. Although I feel like pragmatic's not the best word for uh, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take for it. them, but like I don't know what other word to use. Then it's for pragmatic. <laughs> um it, it I yeah, we'll go with pragmatic because like she was like, Oh, is a doctor not gonna help? Great, then I can kill this man. Like she was she's very to the point. Her only real mission is to kill these people and uh the actress for this, um put it very well in the post show that she's like, it's probably a good thing that she died because I don't think that this is a character that could have found peace. <laughs> like this, this was just such an upset person that like once they got Henry, they wouldn't have been able to lead. Yeah. That's what the, the way that actors can like portray these like hateable characters so well is, is like biz I bizarre. Love so like, I'm the kind of person that, um, I won't do the dumb, dumb thing and like hate an actor for a t terrible character that they're playing. Uh, Funny that which, we're talking about Last of Us too. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, I feel like that's a very common thing. A lot of people who play different roles, um, going back to Game of Thrones, um, the kid who played Joffrey like <laughs> retired and like, was just like, yeah, I'm just going to focus on community work. Um, yeah. it, we, and it was in part because of the amount of hate that he was getting. And he's just like, I don't really like acting anymore. Yeah, thankfully, that was years ago. And people are somewhat more tolerable now. Uh, <laughs> somewhat. What was the most... It, there was a Marvel show recently that I feel like people were very upset with a certain character that was I, playing an evil person. I'm trying to remember, but I, I can't. I will get back to it. We'll get back that to that. As far as like other characters, just re a very quick, a small segue, like just like uh, Homelander and the boys. Yes. And as whatever people say about it, one of the main uh, characters in 13 Reasons Why, like... Uh, he played one a super hateable character that a lot of people relate to. But I remember seeing uh, like another thing like I know you're playing this guy. Play, you're just acting this role because someone needs to portray it. Yeah. So like, good praise for that. Yeah. The it it is funny how a lot of people have trouble divorcing them their hate for the character from the hate to the actor. I fortunately Kathleen ha is not like in so many episodes back to back that I see this being a problem. But that is absolutely a character that would attract that kind of hate. Yeah. Um. Because I mean they're awful, um, but she she gets uh, she gets gotten by a child clicker. Yeah, which by the way, terrifying. Yeah, it was very terrifying. <laughs> that I didn't think a small clicker would be worse than a large clicker. Nah, I told I told it. <laughs> was there ever a baby clicker uh, in the game? I don't remember at all. Oh my Jesus god, Christ. the um. Sorry, my phone vibrated. Just get the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we're talking about zombies and something's buzzing. Um, no, but going back to the beginning, like, first of all, the infected, very cool Dude, and horrifying to the see. The way they all just burst it out of that, that was terrifying. I wasn't, I don't know why. I was like, yeah, they're going to be slow. They weren't slow. And I think the best part though was like seeing the truck just slowly touch in. Like, I'm like, oh shit, this is the this is the hole. And then you just very softly hear the the infected down there. And then all of a sudden, boom, just hundreds and hundreds fall. I wasn't out. listening with headphones, so I didn't get to have that experience. <laughs> Honestly, I probably should have. I have a, a home sound system that like does have a subwoofer, oh, all right. so I should have turned it up. Um, it, Wait, well, it was in the morning, so <laughs> I think yeah, it, I, I didn't want to. Like, also, my partner was sleeping in the other room, and I didn't want to wake him, so I was just like, okay, I'll have <laughs> the volume down. That's a good sound design choice if it, you could yeah. have heard it that early on. The bursting forward, um, the amount of clickers that were in there yeah. because of the fact that I guess they were all underground for. Well, years. well, here's the thing. The way um, the infected works that it's um, as years go by, they get more and more infected. Yeah. So like it starts off with like runners, the stalkers, like the main people you see like yeah. the infected. So uh, like Sam, he would be considered a runner basically. Um, the clickers become roughly around a year. Yeah. Uh, to become clickers because they they because the infections take over the eyesight and stuff like that. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> the bloater. The bloater for even more years after that. 
And it's interesting too because you hear Henry say that they they like they they rounded up all the infected underground years ago. So yeah. like this thing plays into your head that there's so many clickers and now and then the bloater coming out. Oh, that was well, so like cool. oh my god, my hope originally was like oh so hopefully they starved because they did talk about that as a potential option for uh, things like early on, like in some of the flashbacks. They were like, we just got to starve them out for a couple years and then hopefully they'll be gone. And it's like, no, apparently they are. Yeah, um, the infection will get worse and stronger. Yeah. And, and in part two, whew, oh, you will not be ready. I've so oh, Alex and I have heard whispers about a thing called a rat king. Um, which it's my understanding that that's going to be the worst of them. And I hope that it is just that. Um, Listen, all I'm going to say is that, um, <laughs> there's, there's one in between bloater and rat King that I had so much trouble dealing with in the game. I, um, I hated it. I hate I'm it. not, I'm not here for, uh, I mean, I am here for it because <laughs> I like, uh, I like a good zombie flick. I am not here for it. the fact that I am, um, episode two, like legitimately had me gripping my seat and like this episode wasn't that bad because it was like, okay, they're the diversion. They're actually good to be here in this little bit. Watching the bloater rip a person's head off. Yeah. Not a great time. Um, but I was kind of okay with it otherwise. The the only thing I wasn't okay with is um poor Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Um this is the this is the reason why I spent this morning. This is in my the whiplash wheels. in the entire oh, series at the moment. The poor Ellie. This is like because this moment for Ellie, the second that she finds out, she's like I'm going to try and heal you. My blood's supposed to be medicine. And she's obviously is really hoping that it works, but like I do think the poetics of her promising that she would stay up with him and then falling asleep as the first failure to him. And then the second failure being that when she checks on him in the morning, he is fully gone. Yeah. <sighs> The, and then the way that she just leaves the I'm sorry on his grave. The fact that they even buried them. Like, yeah. they didn't get to do that for Tess. These are the first people that they actually get to do that for and they get to pay some respects for. Yeah. And, like, you think about it, too. Like, Tess, um, the the guys from, uh... Uh, Bill and Frank. Bill and Frank. And now we have Henry and Sam. Like... I, every person that they pass by dies, um, which I feel like for Joel, he just looks at it as that's the way that this goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, there is death everywhere. But for Ellie, this is, like, her truly discovering the world, and this is her, like, becoming... I feel like she's going to be much more jaded after this. Oh, yeah, especially if you see her tears when Henry sh shoots himself. Like oh, my God, the... The immediate disassociation. Yeah. Like, she lets out a gasp, she watches, and then, like, there's just a moment where you watch her eyes, like, drift away. Not to where he just fell on the ground, but to another spot just in the room. And she's not screaming, she's just letting that sink in, and then repressing it in the moment. Yeah. And, like, even then, when Joel is kind of just standing there, sort of paying his respects and pondering the situation, she's the one that's like, we go. You know what's like one of the worst parts too? Like at that moment, there was like not even any words. Everybody knew what how they were feeling. They were just they just couldn't speak. Yeah, the I mean, that's the thing is like also Joel is not an emotionally healthy man. Um, he is not really in touch with his feelings. Well, considering day one he lost his daughter, yeah. Yeah, no, and that's kind of the thing is like this is an emotionally stunted man with a now daughter figure that he has to care for and he's not emotionally equipped for it which oh, yeah. i feel like that's like part of the juicy juicy conflict between these two characters it's not necessarily the fact that they are against each other but they can play into each other in unhealthy ways which is very well constructed narratively and makes their relationship that more compelling. And then when they do have these moments of little victories of like him being more father-like and him doing things for Ellie and them getting closer and closer together, it makes those moments all the sweeter. 
unfortunately, it also means that when something bad inevitably is going to happen, it's going to be that much harder for them and as the viewers that have been watching us. Yeah, I think this is doing, honestly, such a good and, like, true... Um, fuck, I keep forgetting the name for it. But, like, call, of course, to the the source material. Yeah. Like, as many people have known, just from knowing of the game, that doesn't even have to play it or even watch someone play it. Like, The Last of Us is a hard-hitting game, like, narratively and, like, gameplay-wise. Yeah. And just... And, like, regardless of what people say about, like, um, the Part 2 version of the game, like, it still has the, is those hitters. It's my understanding that Part 2 grapples a lot more with what is still, um, I'm not going to say a controlling idea here. I'm going to say it's a theme because this one, the controlling idea seems to be much more about interpersonal relationships and doing thing and, like, doing things for the ones that you love. Where a theme in this game, however, is the moral grayness that surrounds everything is... Are the things that you're doing for the ones that you love right or wrong? And does right and wrong even matter in this situation anymore? And you can really clearly see that with the foil that they set up between Joel and Henry, specifically in the ways that they are going about caring for the people that they love. Yeah. And while Joel, again, did that kind of stuff for Tess, inevitably, he's going to be doing that kind of stuff for Ellie. Yeah. And, and also his brother. Yeah. Well... Yeah, well, I mean, like, how, we, ha how yeah, we haven't met Tommy yet. You're yeah. right. So we don't know what that dynamic's going to be. Um, I'm hoping that the trailer is lying to me, <laughs> um, because the preview made it seem like they're going to have a bumpy relationship when they finally meet, and that I find very upsetting. But yeah, there's always like one of those two, like in in like any kind of like series, especially zombie wise. There's always like that tension between siblings. Yeah, I, I mean. Because zombie films and uh, zombie stories, when they are good, and my, again, I have gripes with The Walking Dead, but my gripes with The Walking Dead is more the fact that it's a series that I can't find hope in. I can't find, like, a wee little morsel of things are going to be okay for these characters because they don't really dangle that fruit. Um, uh, but they do expect the idea of how do people try to survive when no hope is there. Yeah. Where this, there is... There is a there is an example of hope. Uh, settlements are way more established in this universe, um, unlike The Walking Dead. Even though the zombies in this universe are way worse than The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, but the way that everything else is disseminated is always about people. And what does this situation do? Not only when the monsters are the people that we love, but also how do we take care of those that we love and all those sorts of questions that can exist within this sort of time frame. So like everyone that like the really bad faith critiques of this show that are like, it's a zombie game. It should be more about killing zombies, mm -hmm. not about this emotional stuff and this gay stuff. This show's too gay for me. I am paraphrasing other people. That is not me. Um, just to make that abundantly clear. I just find that there's so much bad faith with that and also a lack of understanding of what makes these stories good in the first place. And The Last of Us is definitely a story first game. I have known about this game strictly as a cry fest <laughs> since it came out. And because I'm not a PlayStation player, I have never gotten to play it, which probably does need to change at some point in my life. I probably need to get on the PlayStation bandwagon. <laughs> well, I think actually, I think that they did either just got added to Steam or they're going to. But it's not added to Steam? Uh, it's not endorsement. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, You may have just ruined me with that statement. I try. That was terrible, by the way. <laughs> we will we'll find out. And uh, <laughs> thank you guys for coming in. We'll be back next week, I believe, with... Uh, well, in like a whole ass nine ish days because of the staggered release on this thing. Yeah, thanks. 52? 53? I don't fucking know. You can't say the well, you have to say the big game. Oh, wait, really? Yes. All right, let's rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, big game and teams and sports. <laughs> oh, you can say the Eagles. By the way, we are from Philly, so uh, if this episode is coming out late, it's because go birds. Um, and. I mean, will that really stop? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be out rioting with the rest of the city. Make no I'll mistake. I'll be working this Sunday. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. This has been The Return of the Show.
Hey, it's Ben here. Haven't done one of these in a while, but just a quick reminder that if you are following, go ahead and make sure you leave us a review on your favorite podcatcher of choice. It does help people find the show. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. It is where all of our content is, and we're really close to monetization. Thanks.